In this video, we go over RDP short path for AVD with public networks. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Raltos. My last video went over RDP short path for private or managed networks. This video goes over short path for public networks, how our clients can get a more efficient network connection without a private network. If you like this content, please be sure to subscribe. It really helps grow the channel. Also, check out the links below for my courses on Udemy.com, including one on AVD. And a shout out to all my channel members, your support is appreciated. Back to it, let's quickly recap how a connection is initiated in Azure Virtual Desktop with Reverse Connect Transport. First, when the session host starts, the remote desktop agent loader connects to the AVD broker and opens a persistent communication channel. The connection starts with the client logging into Azure AD. The client gets a token and passes that to the subscription feed service. A list of resources available to the client is returned. Then the user selects a resource to connect to. A TLS 1.2 connection to the closest AVD gateway is established. Then the broker identifies a session host and orchestrates the connection. A TLS 1.2 connection from the session host to the gateway is established. Once both client and session hosts are connected to the gateway, the RDP handshake starts and the connection is established. That's the basic communication channel between the client and the session host. It works, but it uses TCP and all communication is relayed through the RD gateway. A direct UDP connection would be faster, but we don't have a private network connection. That's where short path for public networks can help. Before that, let's review another technology, simple transversal underneath NAT or STUN. STUN helps computers find their public IP address when they're behind a firewall or other NAT device. In this example, the client sends a request to a STUN server. The source IP is changed to the NAT device public IP address. The STUN server then replies with a public IP and port of the client. Now the client knows its public IP address. This is simplified, but it works for the purpose of this video. Let's see how STUN helps our connection. We start with a reverse connect transport. Then the client and session host get a list of all network interfaces and allocate a UDP socket to each interface with their IP address and port. They connect to the STUN server with each address and port combination. The STUN server passes back the public IP address and port of each interface. The client and session host create a candidate list of public IP addresses and ports. The candidate lists are exchanged between the client and session host. Then the client and session host attempt to connect to each other simultaneously with the public IP and ports they exchanged. If multiple connections succeed, the fastest connection is selected. Once selected, the RDP connection is moved from the reverse connect transport to the UDP connection. The same TLS RDP encryption is used over the faster UDP connection. There are a couple things required for this to work. We don't have to modify the client or session host. Short path for direct connection is enabled by default. I guess that's not really a requirement then, but an important piece of information nonetheless. It requires UDP on the firewall and outbound UDP port 3478 for the stun server. It only works with Windows Remote Desktop Client 1.2.3488 or newer. This feature is Windows only. And Symmetric NAT is not supported. Symmetric NAT changes the source port number during the NAT process. For RDP and stun to work, the port needs to stay the same. Both Azure Firewall and Azure NAT Gateway use Symmetric NAT. We can verify that short path with direct connection is working by viewing the connection settings when logged into AVD. It will show UDP is enabled and the transport protocol is UDP. So what if this doesn't work in your environment? Well, that's where short path for public networks and the indirect connection comes in. Before we review that, let's review another networking service. Transversal using Relay NAT or TURN. TURN is an extension of STUN. TURN is used when two peers want to exchange data but can't communicate directly due to network limitations such as the STUN port being blocked or the use of symmetric NAT. The TURN service acts as a UDP relay between two peers. Let's see how TURN works with an AVD connection. Just like before, the remote connect transport session is established. Then there's an attempt to connect with STUN. If that fails, TURN is used. The Interactive Connectivity Establishment or ICE service coordinates the connection management of TURN. If that succeeds, the connection is moved to the TURN relay. Communication flows through the relay with UDP. If both TURN and STUN fail, the connection reverts back to reverse connect transport. 
Some things to know about the indirect connect method. It's enabled by default. Well, kind of. We'll get to that in a second. But there's no client or session host configuration required. It requires the remote desktop client and only works with Windows. It's currently in public preview. And while in preview, it's only available on validation host pools. That requirement will change when it's generally available. You can tell it's working by the connection status on the client. It will show UDP is enabled and the transport protocol is UDP and it will also indicate a relay. There's no demo for this video. There's really nothing to configure. There are a couple notes though to end with. UDP has to be enabled on the client, session host, and all points in between for both the direct and indirect connection to work. Both options use universal rate control protocol to enhance UDP with active monitoring of the network link. This improves reliability and performance even with the indirect method that uses the UDP relay. And finally, it's recommended to enable Trito to increase the number of NAT transversal candidates. That is an overview of the short path direct and indirect option for public networks. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.